So right behind me here, the statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, that image of the heart of Jesus, and particularly when we think about the images that we can see in the church here and there of our Lord pointing to his heart, and what does that heart look like? If you try to draw into your mind for a moment, what does the heart of Jesus look like? The Sacred Heart, it's, it's, it's on fire, right? It burns with a love for you. The heart of Jesus is a flame. And we see this heart burning with love. It's a beautiful image, isn't it? And then around that heart is a crown of thorns. And that heart so tender and humble and loving is wounded. And what wounds the heart of Jesus? Our sins. But it goes on loving. And if you look closely at images of the heart of Jesus, then you will see that it is pierced and it's bleeding, not just from the crown of thorns, but we can imagine now the crown of the Roman, or the sword of the Roman soldier. So this beautiful image of the heart of Jesus that the church calls us to meditate on today. And we have these beautiful readings as well. I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. When we think about who God is, Lord of heaven and earth, creator, Father, creator, Jesus is calling praise out to his Father. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Who here wants to be described as a little one? There was a woman many years ago, some of you will remember this, she very famously said, only the little people pay taxes. I don't know if you remember her, Leona Helmsley. She was like a billionaire, hotel heiress, and she thought it was beneath her to pay taxes. Only the little people do that. We have to be little people in the eyes of God, that God can lift us up. We must be humble, and humility is not necessarily a virtue that we always find appealing, but it is an absolute necessity if we are going to know the love of God. Very often, people, very often, in our world today, and I, I hate to say, I think even particularly in Catholicism, we may speak about the love of God, and that's a good thing. And the feast, the solemnity of the sacred heart of Jesus is to highlight that heart on fire for, with love for you. But how do we experience the love of God? What is a necessary component in us to know the love of God? We must have the humility to receive it. And that humility comes through the awareness of our own sin and weakness. And boy, Father Mike, don't talk about sin. And we, just tell me about the love of God, okay? No, they both, they go together. They're an inseparable message. That that heart that is aflame is wounded by our sin, and we must recognize that. And it's not that God loves us because we're so great. God loves us because he is love. And we must recognize how he comes to us to lift us up and put us in his heart and save us. Now, a line I used a few months ago, and Father Adam, whom I respect, I respect Father Adam, as a homilist and uh, his insights into the gospel. And I said this here and he heard it on the, on the uh, Facebook. And, and when I first heard it, it struck me. Love came into the world and was not loved. See, Jesus is love and he was rejected. And that's the story of the cross. 
And the story of the cross tells us of God's love and the need for humility. But so often when we're called to repent or we're called to humility or we're called to transformation or we're called to be little, we resist. And so today we meditate. Today we are invited into the love of God and the image of the love of God that has risen up in the church is the heart of Jesus. And what does that heart look like? It's a flame. It is a flame, it is burning with love for you. And it is wounded by your sin and selfishness. But it continues to call you and me to be purified and whole and lifted up and learn to love as God loves us.